Maybe Alien Covenant wasn't quite the alien movie all the fans have been dying for, but it came pretty close. It had lots of aliens, right? As a bridge between Prometheus and the greater alien universe, Covenant bore a heavy burden for fans of the franchise, and it took that burden seriously. Love it or hate it, we got an official backstory for the Xenomorphs and the promise of more mythology to come. What we also got was a ton of easter eggs pointing back to earlier alien films. Here's a look, but be careful, some of these eggs could have some pretty nasty content lurking inside. Like spoilers! <laughs> The Bird Die Hard fans were probably looking for this little guy the whole movie, and they weren't disappointed. This little drinking bird thing has been in a few of the Alien movies. The first time you see it is the opening shot of Alien, which has two of them alone on the Nostromo's eating table. It shows up a few times throughout the movie, particularly the scene where Kane takes an alien to the chest. The same bird shows up again in Aliens, and then again in the game Alien Isolation and now it's back again in Alien Covenant. Why? Who knows? But at this point, the bird has been in the franchise longer than Sigourney Weaver. The Hidden Trailer Even before Covenant hit theaters, the marketing team was already throwing out some easter eggs. One of those landed in the form of a brand new teaser that featured this hashtag. Plug that into Instagram and you would have found an Instagram account with the same name and only one post. A hidden trailer for Alien Covenant, set to the tune of John Denver's Take Me Home, Country Roads, which Elizabeth Shaw was singing in a transmission in the movie. That's also the hashtag spelled backwards, Take Me Home. Terrible Food About a million people tuned in to the extended pre-release clip Last Supper on YouTube. In hindsight, releasing that scene was a beautiful marketing move. Since it's not even in the movie, it's like an extra 5 minutes of movie for all of us who have been carefully waiting for each new Covenant teaser. And while that's kind of an easter egg in itself, we like to dig deeper. The entire scene is set up almost exactly like the scene in Alien, right before the first chest burster pops out of Kane. Even the angle of the shot is almost identical. That's certainly not a coincidence since these are both Ridley Scott films. Then Upworth, played by Cali Hernandez, starts choking in the Last Supper clip, and Danny McBride's Tennessee makes this joke. Hey, um, the food's not that bad. Which is almost exactly what Parker said to Kane when he starts choking in the original movie. What's the matter? The food ain't that bad, baby. If there's one thing we've learned by now, it's that when it comes to space, you should probably pack your own lunch. David and Walter Michael Fassbender plays two parts in Alien Covenant, a reprisal of his David 8 role from Prometheus and Walter, an updated version of David that launched with the crew of the Covenant. But for the longest time, the androids in the Alien franchise seem to be following a Sesame Street naming pattern. Ash, Bishop, Cool, David… they all went in alphabetical order. Until… Walter. Not Eduardo, like we all expected, but Walter. Well, one fan theory behind that name choice is as simple as it is logical. Both of those names are callbacks to David Geiler and Walter Hill, two producers who have been a part of Alien since the very first film. Is it true? It'd be an awesome tribute if it was. After all, these were the guys who rewrote Dan O'Bannon's original script and basically made the original sci-fi horror classic we know and love, Mother's Day. Ah, mother. That disembodied voice that controlled everything on the ship in Alien. Sometimes we dream about her counting down the Nostromo's destruction. T minus five minutes. <laughs> While mother bit the big one when the Nostromo exploded, she's definitely back in prequel form. Mother, how long have we been traveling? Approximately 24 days. Is it the same operating system that shows up later in film continuity in Alien? Alien Covenant takes place about 20 years before Alien. If so, Mother can't be very smart, because she should have totally seen the events of Alien coming after everything that happened in Covenant. Beer Fest Fun fact, astronauts love getting drunk. It begins! Give me that! Stop it! In Alien, the crew kicks back with cans of Aspen beer, a brew generously provided by the company that wants to kill them all, Wayland Yutani. In Alien Covenant, that beer is apparently already part of the rations, because the crew of the Covenant drinks the exact same beer. That's a cool, refreshing, frost-brewed throwback to the film that launched the franchise. Paradise Found 
Back when names were still being tossed around for Prometheus 2, one of the working titles was Paradise Lost, a reference to John Milton's 17th century poem about Satan's temptation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Alien Covenant's name obviously changed in the interim, but one of the lines in the movie still alludes to Milton's poem. When David is fighting Walter, David asks, would you rather serve in heaven or reign in hell? In the context of the movie, he's basically saying, quit being a sucky robot and kill everything with me. But the line itself refers back to book one of Milton's poem, when Lucifer says, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, right after he gets tossed out of God's clubhouse. Writing on the wall. Let's talk facehuggers. Prometheus had none, but we all knew going into Alien Covenant that those little bastards would be back in action, since Billy Crudup's character Christopher took one to the face in the trailer. But the question during the movie wasn't if they'd show up, but when. And if you were paying attention, that moment was basically spelled out right on the wall of David's little alien chop shop. Right before David leads Christopher down into the room where all the eggs are waiting, they walk through a doorway with a hand-drawn diagram of a facehugger stuck to the wall right beside it. It was easy to miss. There were diagrams plastered all over the walls, but if you noticed it, it was pretty much a neon sign foreshadowing Christopher's impending chest-bursty death. We missed you, you gross little cuties. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.